My name is Amaya Poor. I'm the alderman of the 47th Ward in the city of Chicago. Is anyone here a Chicago resident? <laughs> All right, good, good. All right, so for those of you that live in the suburbs, you guys, everyone else lives in the suburbs, right? Okay, you're not flying in every day. So um, you'll understand where I'm going with this when it comes to building a neighborhood K through 12 system in the city of Chicago, uh, something that most um, cities have not tried, certainly hasn't been tried in Chicago and something that I've been working on. And I know the theme today is deciding to decide. Um, and my point here um, in, in coming here today is to tell you that one, you just need to decide and then do. And then when you do, you might also have to swim upstream and up against currents that you didn't anticipate. Um, people are gonna tell you that you don't belong or that you shouldn't do something or that it can't be done. And I think fundamentally what it comes down to is if you've decided to do something, then do it, swim upstream and do what it takes and keep talking about it because there's gonna be no better champion of whatever effort that you're gonna move forward on other than you. So, let me begin. 60 years ago, post-independence in India, my dad and a lot of his friends and a lot of my mom's friends took one test that determined the course of their lives. That one test on that one day determined what they were gonna do. And for many of them, they were able to come to the United States. 40 years ago, to make sure that my sister and I wouldn't have to go through that same stress, wouldn't have to deal with the pressures of basically studying for an ent your entire childhood so you can take one test so that you can go to the right college so that your life would be okay, they came to the United States and they moved to Rogers Park. 25 years ago, they figured out that we would have to take one test. So they moved to the suburbs. <laughs> and four years ago, when I was running for office, and for there are a variety of reasons why most people would say I should not be up here, um, when I was running for office, we decided to knock on doors. And we knocked on almost all the doors in the 47th Ward. And one of the things that I kept hearing over and over again as I talked to my future constituents was that, you know, I, I really love this neighborhood, and you know, there's problem A, B, C, or we'd like you to deal with issue one, two, and three. But fundamentally, the schools is why we moved to this community, because we have a great network of K through eight schools. But we're gonna leave for high school, and we're gonna leave for the suburbs. And that kind of stuck out to me, because I kept hearing that over and over again, that um, people would move for a certain school, their property values would be connected to the performance and perception of that one K through eight school, and then up and leave for the suburbs at the seventh or eighth grade, which is usually the drop dead exit point. And in most cases, would be leaving in the second or third grade because they just said, you know what, I don't want to deal with the stress of thinking about getting my child into one of these schools. So I won and I decided that I was going to do something about this neighborhood model and figure out a way to keep people here, to give people in the city what people seek out in the suburbs, what people would professional portability and economic mobility seek out when they leave. So that leads us to Grow Community, which is uh, an umbrella um, sort of hashtag organization, community group that we've put together. Um, and we use schools as a starting point for everything that we do, whether it's investing in infrastructure, whether it's um, attracting new businesses, whether it's renovating a park, everything we do starts with thinking about how it impacts the schools and what we can do to tie that to the schools. And most importantly, the message that we try to put forward, and again, this is where it's, we're, we're swimming upstream and this is where it's really difficult of a sell sometimes, is to tell people it's like, it doesn't matter whether you have kids. I don't, I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> I just got married. Um, that you could be a senior, you could be an empty nester, you could, decide that you didn't want to have children, um, but that everyone has a role in making sure that their school performs at a high level, that it's perceived at a high level. Because you know whether if you own property, well, your property value goes up if your school does well. So everyone's got some vested interest in making sure your schools are doing well. Because in my mind, and in what I heard at the doors, were, were that the neighborhood schools are the basic building block of any community. All right, so here are the realities. 
A neighborhood K through 12 isn't something that exists in the city of Chicago because uh, what ends up happening is uh, parents and students basically prepare their entire lives from the first grade through the eighth grade for one test which gets them into a selective enrollment school, right? We have 10 selective enrollment schools. What does that mean? So 60 years ago, my dad took one test that determined the course of his life post-independence in India when it was still very much so a developing nation. And here we are in the most advanced nation this planet has ever seen. And one test tells an eighth grader whether they're going to get into the right high school so that they can get into the right college. It's a totally absurd system. And what it also does, it creates a, a level of panic in families and amongst kids because they feel like they have to be perfect. So if you live in my community, in the 47th Ward, you literally have to test in the 95th percentile or higher to test into one of these schools. And so you can't miss any school, you have to get straight A's, and you have to be perfect. So what that means is you have stress, testing, straight A's, and when parents can't deal with that anymore, or they decide, you know what, I don't want my kid to get to high school and burn out before they go to college, or I just want them to be children and enjoy what, it's, what it means to be a, ch uh, a child, because you know, we all have our whole lives to compete against one another. Um, so they leave. And what has happened in most urban areas is that school reform is thought of as one school against another. You know, if school doesn't do well, you close it. Um, you pit schools against one another. And you run schools like businesses. The problem with doing that is most businesses fail, and schools shouldn't be run like businesses because government has a different calling than the private sector. Government doesn't have the same bottom lines that the private sector has to meet. The bottom line for government is the greater good of everyone. And what I also know is that when I think about what happened with my great elementary schools that are K through eight, people literally around the city moved to my neighborhood for the K through eight schools, is that just a few years ago, one of those schools, for example, was on the list to close. 12 years ago, Coonley Elementary was on the list to be closed because people weren't sending their kids there. There were less than 200 kids. And what happened? Parents, neighbors, teachers, community, community leaders got involved and they said, we're going to do this. This is our school. We're going to take ownership of this place. And they changed the perception. And what happened? Neighbors decided they wanted their, their school to be a good school. Then their other neighbors said it was a good school. And pretty soon it was a great school because everyone else said it was a great school. And then you have people moving into the neighborhood for this great school. Twelve years later, we built a $17 million addition onto this school because it was bursting at the seams. 200 kids on the list for closure. 12 years later, it's one of the best schools in the city that everyone wants to get their child into. And that's wonderful. But what I learned from talking to parents at, at the doors was that all it takes is perception. You change perception, the performance comes. But it's never the other way around. So why do people leave for the suburbs? Suburban communities, and pretty much every community outside of a major city, they build a school system that's K through 12, you pay one tax bill, and then you're done. Your kids walk to school with their friends. They don't split up after the eighth grade. They don't feel like they have to be perfect. It doesn't mean they shouldn't be high achieving. They shouldn't mean that they shouldn't be pushed. It's just you don't have to live in a constant state of stress. And everybody goes to the same school. Now that might mean you get tracked in different programs. But it also doesn't mean that your life is over if you didn't do well in the eighth grade. It also doesn't mean that you feel like your life is over. And I think it's outrageous to think that we tell the seventh or eighth grader that they failed. But what we do in Chicago is we keep ginning, ginning the numbers, right? So what pa parents tell me is, and this is what I talk about swimming upstream, like, I, may, I want my child to go to Northside Prep. Why? Well, the average ACT score at Northside Prep is 31. And my response to that is, of course it is that when you take the best of the best kids in the third largest city in the country and you put them in 10 schools, you're ginning the numbers. And when you gin the numbers, none of the other schools can complete, uh, compete. So imagine if you took all the all-stars from the Cubs, and they're not that many, <laughs> but if you took all the all-stars, or let's just imagine if you made the Cubs play the National League all-star team and, that, and you would say that that's a fair, uh, a fair game. 
That's exactly what we do in Chicago. And the same system that was created you know, 25, 30 years ago to prevent families from leaving the city for the suburbs is now pushing them out. So here's what we did. We connected everything to grow community, meaning everything we did. We used schools as a starting point. We spent the last four years organizing around our schools, but also building a pipeline from K through eight through nine to 12 and change the dialogue that was taking place at the schools. Because again, perception follows performance. I mean, perception drives performance, but performance never comes before perception. And we started working with the mayor's office, three other aldermen, because we realized that school boundaries don't follow ward lines. And we organized about 150,000 people, the people that we represent. And the idea here is you can either leave and pay 15, 20% more in property taxes in the suburbs, or you can stay in the city and we can give you what you seek out here in the city of Chicago, or at least where I, where I represent, not here in, uh, where are we, Deerfield? Yeah, okay. So let me get this. So when you think about connecting this to leadership and deciding to decide, one of the things that I did was understood that these were where we got to with Grow Community was based on a series of conversations that I had at people's doors. That this was my great idea, that there were already lots of people in my community that were willing to organize around their K through eight schools. But they weren't thinking about nine through 12 because they were fixated on selective enrollment schools. But that if you take that capacity that already exists and you connect that with other people and you take those conversations and you look at emerging trends and you say, you know what, it's not just parents from school A, B, or C. All of my parents are saying the same thing. But then you also connect those same conversations to the businesses who are also doing very well based on the performance and the perception of the school. Businesses move to areas where parents drop their kids off and guess what, you see coffee shops open because you know, they wanna stop and get something to eat or get something to drink on the way to work. So we started leveraging those relationships and letting businesses know that you know you have an interest in completing this nine uh, K through twelve, just as suburban communities do. And it's about identifying buy-in and identifying pioneers in your community, so that w if you decide that you're going to move forward on something, and even if you're swimming upstream, you still need pioneers and someone who's going to buy in. And that buy-in part is important, but that also requires a lot of listening. And so while I get to stand up here today and say. You know, this is all great. You know, under my leadership, we were able to organize this and get people behind our neighborhood schools. The truth is, it's my community that decided that this is what they wanted, and I was able to harness that and organize people and get them moving in one direction, together in unison, rather than siloing these various efforts. And by siloing them, it was forcing them to leave. By getting people connected and talking to one another, they were able to say, you know what, we're all dealing with the same thing. We're all dealing, uh, dealing with keeping up with the Joneses. My kid goes to Northside Prep, my kid goes to Whitney Young, and everyone's putting pressure on one another. Well now, instead of that, they're saying, you know what, we don't wanna live like this, we wanna work together and organize around our schools. So my point is when you're thinking about swimming upstream and you make your decision on what you're gonna do, is keep talking about it. Talk to whoever will listen, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this video that I'm gonna get from today and use this to continue talking to my community. So that's another reason why I'm really thanking you guys for having me here today. <laughs> it's part of my propaganda. <laughs> and the goal is that four years from now is to complete the neighborhood K through 12, to give families some stability and equity, and fundamentally use this model as a way to scale this across the city because I think everyone wants the same things. Again, it doesn't matter whether you have kids. Everyone wants a, a strong community that people can move to when they're younger, that they can settle down in, even get married, if they decide to have a family, have a family, and then eventually retire. That's why people leave the city. It's why we want people to stay, because we still have a lot more to offer. But the question is, we need to move away, the, the reality is we need to move away from treating schools as one-offs and pitting them against one another and replicate a model that already works. It works in every community outside of a major urban area. And so we're gonna use Grow Community as our umbrella and so my only advice to you is, um, as you think about deciding to decide, is that what is a crazy idea at first can catch on if you're willing to talk to people, organize people, and get buy-in, 
and leverage your pioneers and understand that you need to share the credit as well because you can't do it alone. Thank you so much. And I hope you get something out of this and it's truly been an honor to be here today. Thanks.